So hopefully everyone can see some VS code. Um, so we're gonna kick things off today with some CICD. Um, and today we're looking at a um, Lambda function uh, as an AWS Lambda uh, written in Python. Um, and all it does is tell us the current time. Uh, so if you don't have a watch, you might like this Lambda function. Uh, so if I invoke this function, uh, we can get back this little object that says the time. Um, and so, as Jeremy said, we're gonna be talking a bit about secrets. Um, and the reason I use this example for secrets is because, um, you know, a lot of the examples we look at for CI uh, that might do like some linting and testing and so on, uh, don't really need secrets. But as we get into actually deploying things or pushing artifacts somewhere, then you usually need some credentials to actually uh, do those operations. So in this case, uh, here's our CI pipeline. And again, written in Python uh, with the Python SDK. Uh, so our first task here is uh, to test our function. In this case, I didn't actually write any tests, but we can you know, run it and make sure it actually runs. Uh, so that's great. Uh, and then the build. So for Lambda functions, the artifact that you want to give to AWS is generally either a zip or a container, right? And since we have just a, this little Python with the native Lambda runtime, we can just upload the zip, it'll be super tiny. Uh, so our build step here, uh, we're getting an Alpine image, uh, installing the zip package, and then zipping that Python file into this function zip. So again, this this little Python file that just has our, that just returns our time now, uh, will be zipped into this function zip. Now here's the part where we actually need credentials, right? So uh, we're going to upload that zip to AWS somehow. Um, and I can scroll down, but don't look further down because we'll get some spoilers here. Um, so we're going to get some AWS containers somehow. And with that container, we're going to take that zip from our build step. Uh, and I can go back and uh, show some more detail here in a second, but we're gonna take that function from the, the function zip from our build step um, and put it in this AWS container. And then using the AWS CLI, we're gonna run AWS Lambda update function code. Our function name is timefunk and our zip file is this function zip that we've put in this container. Now, the credentials to actually do this, um, we have a service user uh, that has credentials just to update or to upload Lambda function code. Um, so we're not using like my super admin creds or whatever uh, we might have put on our um, our hosts for CI. Uh, so to get these credentials for um, for the service user, we're actually storing these in a Hatchcore Vault instance. Uh, so in this case, using Python, um, I'm going to get these. Uh, credentials from my vault instance. And if I just move this over real quick, you can see I'm just running like a dev vault locally for this demo. Uh, so if anything leaks, it's okay because it's on my machine, don't worry. Uh, so we're actually gonna use Python and there's this library called HVAC, which is like um, a Python library for interacting with vault. And so using HVAC, we get a client, and again, this is for our vault host, and I've given it a token in this case, but you might have uh, like OIDC or something set up in your CI environment to say, hey, this instance can access this set of keys in my vault instance. And so once I've got a client for vault, I can ask for these specific uh, values from it, which in this case, I have this AWS credit secret, and in that I have a key and a secret. Uh, so we get that and I kind of abstracted that so we don't repeat too much code here, but uh, this is kind of the syntax for HVAC. So we say, read the secret at the secret, which in this case was AWS creds and give me back the value I asked for, which is key and secret. Um, and then, and it's a bit unoptimized here, that's okay. Uh, but in reality, I probably could have done one query instead of two. Uh, so once we've got these, these uh, values out of vault, and so again, this isn't in, in my dagger pipeline, this is just in my, my Python code. Uh, and so I take this, uh, this key in secret and I tell the dagger client, set the secret, I'm giving it some name, 
and here's the value. And then what this function will do is give me back this uh, container, because again, remember, this is the get AWS container. So this is kind of the, the base part of our deploy step. So it's gonna give us back this container that is the AWS CLI with these two secret variables set for the key ID and access key. And so with that, this container is now authenticated with these credentials uh, for AWS so that any operations uh, that we've given, uh, that we're running here, so in this case, updating the function code, uh, will be run with these credentials that we pulled from Vault. Um, and so if we make a change here, so let's say, uh, actually, let's not make a change first so we can see how fast it is cached. Uh, so we've got uh, Python CI POI. So this is our pipeline we just looked at and everything's cached. We can see we didn't actually update anything in our Lambda because nothing needed to be updated. Uh, but if we go ahead and change this, so let's say, uh, so now our time function says hi demo people. Uh, so we can run this pipeline. And again, a lot of this, um, will still be cached, like all of our base images that we're using, all these things. Uh, so you can see it was super quick, uh, like the CLI image was cached. Um, probably our, a lot of our bases here, like uh, our Python bases and so on. Anyway, we got back this response from AWS that says, okay, I updated your function for you. Um, and so that whole thing took not that long. Uh, 1.7 seconds, apparently. Uh, so now if I invoke this, we can see this updated response. Hi, demo people. So now your, your fancy Lambda watch has a, a special message for you. Um, cool, so we used all of the credentials from Vault. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out real quick is, um, you know, one common point of uh, maybe confusion when you're first starting out with Dagger is, you know, when do I tell my pipeline to actually execute, right? Because I'm I'm piecing together all these steps, which uh, by themselves, as I'm piecing it together, aren't actually being executed. Um, but if every single step I went through and said, uh, test out, standard out, right? And if I did this every single time, then we're, we're repeating work or we're, um, you know, wasting time on, on things that are going to be run eventually. So kind of take a step back, you know, we await this uh, deploy exit code at the very end here. And all of our distinct steps here actually chain together uh, just within the DAG that gets built by the engine. So if I kind of walk backwards through this, right? So we're getting the X code from deploy. And so what does deploy do? It's getting our AWS container, which again has those credentials from vaults uh, put in secret environment. And we're mounting this file. And this file is an output from the build step, right? And so now the engine will be like, okay, in order to perform this deploy step, I need to walk backwards to build so I can get this file from it. And so we go back to build and it's like, okay, we've got this Alpine 3 image. Uh, we've installed zip on it. And oh wait, it needs this directory from the test step, right? And so now in order to get builds for a deploy, we also need to run test. And so walking backwards again, now this is where our test step gets ex executed. So if we go back to look at the, the operations here, uh, if I can make it stop scrolling too much, um, we can see that this actually executes the steps in kind of the order that we want it to without explicitly telling each step, hey, go ahead and execute, go ahead and execute. Uh, we can see, you know, we've built our, our base from the Python slim. Uh, we've zipped our function here uh, in our Alpine image. And then we've gotten it ahead and used the AWS CLI image to deploy things. Um, so again, it's, you know, just looking at the code here, it's super slick because we've got our tests kind of logically separated. Each test might have its own, or each stage might have its own requirements for you know, what it needs in its environment. So like this one needs Python, this one needs zip and so on, but we don't need to have that all in one giant step, right? We can actually logically separate these and have them chained together in a way that makes sense uh, so that we just have this one kind of entry point. 
And again, if we had, you know, if we change something here, so if we wanted to install some other package, then, you know, our first, our test step here will be fully cached. So it's gonna ask for this test directory uh, from this guy here. And this is gonna be like, oh, nothing's changed since last time we ran. So I don't have to rerun all these things or same if we, um, you know, had to add some arguments to this, um, this Lambda step, uh, but we haven't actually changed our Python code, then it's gonna walk all the way back through here and be like, oh, nothing's changed up until here. So this is all completely cached, uh, but we can run this again with our updated commands, right? Um, so yeah, just one other thing to highlight, but then again, the main thing here, you know, we've connected to Vault, uh, we've used the set secret API uh, to say, hey, these credentials I put in are secret, so don't expose them. And then we can see, uh, you know, as I'm scrolling through our output here that I haven't leaked any of my keys. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the demo. Um,